The thing I would most like to see, like in the night sky, is a really big orangish Halloween moon. I want to look at stars. Drama me, to me is um, studying the stars and spa outer space and moon and the moon and and you can look through a telescope and that's like doing astronomy and stuff. Astronomy is the study of stars and planets. How, how were the first couple planets formed? There are many things to see in the night sky and the best way to view them is to use the tools at the Werner Schmidt Observatory located behind Dennis Yarmouth Regional High School in South Yarmouth, Massachusetts. What is inside an observatory? Join us as we take a look at the five basic tools used by amateur and professional astronomers. The first thing we need is a map to find our way around the skies. We use a computer with star mapping software to help us navigate to what we're going to see in the night sky. Our mapping software is a catalog of all the objects that we can view in the sky. We can look and see each of these objects simply by clicking on the screen. Our catalog contains detailed information on each object as we click on its icon, telling us what constellation it's in, when it rises, when it sets, or whether it's an object or constellation that stays up all year round. Walking into the observatory, the first thing we see is a small reception room housing a library of resource materials and a variety of subjects related to astronomy. There is additional equipment stored here in what we call the warm room. Next, we move them beyond the warm room to the dome area itself. It is a circular structure with a metal dome on top and inside is a telescope sitting on a concrete pedestal. As you can see, the door is closed right now, but soon we're going to set everything up, get the dome open, swivel the dome, slew or move the scope, and do some night viewing. This is our telescope, it's the Mead LX200 GPS, computer controlled telescope. An interesting tool in the dome itself is the satellite signal control clock. It receives a radio signal from the satellite and serves as a precision timepiece for exact timing of sky viewing events. We can also use this handheld device to help us get access to all the items in our celestial catalog. We have the Telrev that you looked at here, which is another guide. This little black box right here mm -hmm. has a has a bullseye uh, image uh, that when I look up from down below, I can I can I can know that I'm on I'm sort of on the target. I don't know if you can see it in there. The Telrev actually has a bullseye on there, and that's what we use to line up the object in the sky that we're looking at. Line up the scope with the object. You can see the bullseye if the object is in the center of that bullseye. It should be in the center of your scope. Another handy tool that is useful on the telescope is also shows the degrees and the angle that it's pointing to in the sky. And that's what those calibration marks are on the side wheel here. Once we have our object in view in the main telescope, it's time to use the fine tuning adjustments for optimum image clarity. Mounted on the back of our telescope is a CCD camera. This camera takes digital images and the telescope also has a box with a mirror in it where we can switch the mirror from the optical viewing to the camera viewing. When the mirror is flipped up, we can actually send the pictures to the camera and the camera can send the pictures down to the computer so they can be stored on the computer downstairs in the warm room. 
The camera can also take what we call stack photos. If you stitch enough of the photos together, you can actually create your own little video or movie sequence. The following comet video is actually composed of 500 stacked photos stitched together. On top of the main scope, there is a small spotter scope to give a wider view. Think of this as high-powered binoculars. Next to that is a high-quality refracting telescope, which is used when the main scope is in camera mode. We can view objects that are 4 million light years away. Um, what you're seeing here is the main frame telescope. This is our 16-inch Mead. It's a schmidt cassegrain telescope, which means it has a correcting mirror um, a correcting lens on the top out of glass and there is a base mirror main mirror in the, in the base of the, of the cylinder of the telescope so the light from the, from the star comes in gets, gets uh, refocused with the glass uh, correcting lens on the top comes down directed down the tube to the glass mirror at the bottom it's re bounced back off to a smaller mirror that we have dead center in the center of the scope at the top and then the image is shot down again through this small tube at the base of the telescope and that comes into our eyepiece down here through the through this uh, angle mirror right here so it bounces up and through and out. To is the image of the viewer right side up upside Actually, down? Actually it's it is upside down and backwards. Okay. Is the image that we look at, so it's uh, it's somewhat uh, disorienting. But uh, for our purposes, um, as long as we understand that, we can we can uh, uh, we can invert that in our mind, or we can use software as we image and flip over with the software uh, when we work on it. The actual telescope itself has two uh, some counterweights that that are required. There's a heavy weight here that's actually protected by this sponge. The main telescope itself has a series of reflecting mirrors that gathers light and focuses an image on the eyepiece or sends it to the camera. This arrangement of the mirrors allows the telescope to be a compact, relatively compact design. If it didn't have these mirrors, it would need to be three times longer than it is. Looking through the front of the telescope, we can see the main reflecting mirror and the main light gathering mechanisms that are used to send the images from the front of the telescope to the viewer's eyepiece. The telescope itself rests on a concrete pillar so that as we walk around, our vibrations from our feet do not interfere with the image that is scattered in the telescope. Normal lighting would compromise our night vision, so therefore all the monitors and screens and lights in the dome itself are covered with red filters and the lighting itself is all red. Do we do any solar observing here with any solar equipment? Uh, we can. Okay. We, we have, a, we have a small, some small solar um, uh, uh, a unit that we can actually bounce light onto a screen. Mm -hmm. I know at one point we had solar, we had welder's glass on a solar scope somewhere. I know Jim Carlson yeah. had it. But. Yeah, I, I, I haven't used it, but, okay. but I know it's here. And I know John Greenberg uh, has a, does have a solar telescope that you can actually look at the sun. And of course, we always caution everybody never to look at the sun right. ever in, in, in binoculars and glasses or, okay. or just even to stare at the sun. It's okay. not good. Well, there you have it. 2009 is the year of the astronomer. So get outside with your binoculars and sky chart and take in the views. Or better yet, visit an observatory. What would you like to see tonight? I think I would like to see the um, Pluto because it wasn't an Earth in our, not any, anymore because they said that so I would like to see it and maybe make sure for myself and I could write something to them um, 
and that's probably what I would like to see. Um, it's looking in the stars and seeing um, space and stuff from a telescope and you can see the moon, sometimes you can see the moons and the, no, you can see some of the planets and the moon's crests and stuff. And you can look at the stars around it and it's pretty neat. You're looking into the sky, all the stars and yeah. Looking at stars. Star because I like to make wishes. Okay, true. Okay, and um, guess what?